Hi I am Aditi Bhatia today I am going to discuss about the topic quantum computing history of quantum computing in the early 1900 scientists found that as things get smaller and smaller classical physics does not hold planck stated that energy is quantized schrodinger said that until measured an electron can be in many places at the same time and heisenberg stated that one can never know both the position and momentum of particle with certainty The idea that so many things were probable and uncertain was bizarre but even with greatly renowned skeptics quantum mechanics was born even though computers advanced simulating even simple molecular system was nearly impossible due to so many probabilities In 1982 Richard Feynman proposed an interesting idea that if you want to make a simulation of nature you have to incorporate quantum mechanics in it therefore instead of bits that is zeros and ones in modern computers a quantum computer would have qubits a qubit is a photon or any other small particle with quantum mechanical properties that can represent a zero and one at the same time This is how computers would mimic nature's probabilities. David Deutsch laid out a basic theoretical structure of a quantum computer in 1985. Deutsch along with Josa developed the first quantum algorithm called the DJ algorithm which was exponentially faster than any classical algorithm. Then in 1994 Shor developed a quantum algorithm to factor multiples of large prime numbers. and the world went insane because rsa encryption schemes were built on the assumption that classical computers would take ages to factor such numbers but the actual hardware is not yet capable of such big calculations and we need thousands of qubits and stable machines to perform this algorithm in 1996 grover developed a quantum database search algorithm and in 1998 a working 2 qubit quantum computer could solve this algorithm 20 years later IBM presented the first commercially available quantum computer Moving on to the experiment that started it all Dr Erwin Schrodinger came up with a thought experiment about quantum mechanics All we need is a radioactive atom a Geiger counter a hammer a glass tube filled with cyanide and a cat in a steel box When the atom decays it releases radiation which sets off the Geiger counter which triggers the hammer to break the tube and kill the cat but here the concept of superposition would be applied which means that the electron and the atom are in multiple states at once so the atom is both decayed and intact therefore the cat is both dead and alive until of course one opens the box and observes one reality due to our limitations as a human being understanding the movement of electron powers our modern computers and an understanding of superposition will power the future of computing a quantum computer can cover numerous paths at the same time and do billions of years worth of computing in a matter of hours or minutes a quantum computer is made up of qubits which is a photon or any other small particle with quantum mechanical properties that can represent zero and one at the same time There are mainly four different types of notations. The first one is Dirac notation or bracket notation. Here each potential outcome is contained inside a ket. For example, when we flip a coin, there can only be two possibilities, heads and tails, and it can be denoted as shown. Probability that the outcome will be heads is given by mod a the whole square and the and tails is given by mod b the whole square. So mod a square plus mod b square will be equal to 1. Therefore the value of a will be 1 by root 2 outcome of heads inside a ket and the value of b will be 1 by root 2 outcome of tails inside a ket Similarly if we flip two coins we have four possible outcomes heads and heads heads and tails tails and heads and tails and tails There will be four variables here a b c and d and the values of each will be half of the outcome of the respective case inside a ket and the sum of mod a square plus mod b square plus mod c square plus mod d square will be 1 The next notation is quantum notation here the only two possible outcomes are 0 and 1 a qubit can be represented as shown in the slide similar to the dirac notation the probability that the qubit will be read as 0 is mod a whole square and that of 1 is mod b the whole square the sum of these values will also be 1 if we measure n qubits there will be two raised to n outcomes the next notation is a simplified version of the previous one it is known as quantum shorthand notation For example if we have a linear equation 1x plus 0y is equal to 2 we can simply write it as x is equal to 2 Similarly if we have an equation 1 times output of 0 plus 0 times output of 1 we can simply write it as the out- output will be 0 Another way of simpli- simplification will be to factor out equivalent constants 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन बाय रूट टू आउटपुट जीरो प्लस वन बाय रूट टू आउटपुट वन वी कैन इग्नोर द कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ वन बाय रूट टू इफ वी हैव टू क्यूबिट्स वी कैन राइट बोथ ऑफ द आउटपुट्स इन साइड अ सिंगल कैट द लास्ट नोटेशन इज द मैट्रिक्स नोटेशन दिस नोटेशन इज यूज टू डिराइव क्वांटम गेट्स एंड सर्किट्स हियर इंस्टेड ऑफ देर आउटपुट्स देर प्रोबेबिलिटीज आर रिटर्न इन साइड अ मैट्रिक Moving on to the effects of quantum mechanics which are important to understand the working of a qubit. The first one is superposition. Some things can hold two values at once until it is measured or stopped. For example, the picture given is both a rabbit as well as a duck in superposition. A coin which is flipped is both heads and tails until it comes to a rest. Similarly in quantum computing, many values are stored together in superposition. Therefore, a qubit can be 1 and 0 at the same time. but the probability of any of the two outcomes is not always 50/50 we can alter it for example a coin with a piece of gum stuck on one end will not have equal probability for heads and tails quantum operations can operate on all values at once and change the probabilities of each result operations gradually refine the values until the likely correct outcome is reached after measurement any superposition collapses leaving only the measured value Superposition is powerful. If we have n bits, there are two raised to n permutations possible. A classical bit can represent only one of the permutations at a time. Therefore, eight classical bits will store eight pieces of information. A qubit can represent a combination of these permutations at once because of superposition. Therefore, eight qubits can show two raised to eight, that is, two fifty-six possible states, which means two fifty-six pieces of information. If we add one more qubit to it, we will get five and two pieces of information. Therefore, qubits show exponential growth. The next effect is entanglement. Some things are dependent on each other and some are independent. For instance, if we have two baskets B1 and B2, and Ted has ten marbles which he divides between the two baskets. After dividing, he calls his friend to open one box. He opens B1 and finds three marbles in it, and without opening B2, he says that there are seven marbles in the second basket. This is because the number of marbles in each box is dependent on the other. In the case of flipping two coins, the, there will be four possibilities, and each will be independent of the other. But what would happen if these two coins are entangled? There would be a scenario where the probability of two heads will be fifty percent, and two tails will be fifty percent. But the probability of heads and tails will be zero. Qubits become entangled in a similar way. There is a fifty-fifty probability of measuring them in the same state, but never in the opposite. Entanglement means that the quantum states of qubits are described with respect to each other, even though they are in spatial proximity. Moving on to the ways of building a quantum computer, there are two known ways. The first one is superconducting quantum computers, where a qubit is made up of small superconducting circuits. Superconductors are materials in which electrons flow more easily when they are cold. This circuit naturally oscillates at different frequencies, and these qubits can be controlled with microwave pulses and electrical controls. They can also be entangled by tuning them to the same frequency. They are easy to build and fast, but the difficulties faced are that it requires a temperature below minus two seventy three degrees Celsius, and these qubits are hard to entangle. The second way is trapped ion quantum computers, where charged atoms or ions are used as qubits, and an ion trap consisting of rapidly oscillating electric fields is used to trap these qubits. Ions in excited state and ground state together form one qubit, and fine-tuned lasers are used to control the state of this qubit. This circuit is stable at room temperature, accurate, and the qubits are easier to entangle. But it is slow compared to others and are difficult to scale down. Quantum computing is still in its infancy, even though the idea was developed forty years ago. It can work hundred million times faster than modern computers and can solve complex computational tasks like encryption, cyber security, weather prediction, which modern computers could take thousands of years to solve within hours or minutes. Quantum computing could change the world. It could transform medicine, break encryption, and revolutionize communications and artificial intelligence. Companies like IBM, Microsoft and Google are racing to build reliable quantum computers. While no quantum computer is yet sophisticated enough to carry out calculations that a classical computer can't, great progress is underway. Thank you. Mm-hmm.